What's going on, y'all? Welcome to Dylan Talks Tone. Uh, today, we're going to dive into a bit of some problem solving. Uh, for those of you that are not familiar with what we do here, obviously besides making videos, uh, we've been making pickups for the last 10 years. And something has always bugged me, uh, especially on the single coil side of life. Uh, about the quality of pickups in general. Now, this is probably something you've not seen. So if you order a set of pickups from me, you're not gonna see these issues because we weed them out by the time you get the product. But uh, there are some problems here. And so today I'm gonna show you uh, some major moves that we've made here at Dylan Talks Tone to solve some problems with bobbins. Let me show you over here. All right, so here is, um, this is a strap bobbin, okay? Seems simple enough, right? Wrap a bunch of wire around it, solder a bunch of, solder a bunch, uh, a couple of leads to it, and throw a cover on it, and boom, you have a strap, strap pickup. Uh, but this is not how they come to us. They come to us, up until this point anyway, in these flat pieces, Basically, this is a paper with rubber, more or less, impregnated into it. And there's a couple of ways that you can make this stuff. This particular one is die cut. Uh, these two are cut with a laser. Now, the quality issues that we run into are a couple of things. One is, this is from a very widely known vendor that a lot of folks that make pickups um, either hobby or, you know, as a business. Um, I'm not going to name names today because we're going to talk some crap and I don't want to, you know, make anybody uncomfortable. But this is a pretty widely known vendor that a lot of you know. Um, I hate this. This is sticky because what they do is they laser, at, they laser cut this and then they don't do anything with it after that. Uh, so it looks all dirty and gross and you can actually rinse it off, but I don't feel like that should come to me like that. I feel like that's something that I should not have to deal with. The other problem with these, uh, now these, I literally took these two sets out of the same stack in my inventory. And if you'll notice here, this magnet does not fit. This magnet fits in this one that we want it that way. We want it pretty tight. And then we have a press over there that we actually press them in. I want them to be press fit like that. Now I ordered these two on the same day. They came in the same bag and this one is too loose and this one is too tight. And I've had conversations with this vendor many times about the inconsistency of this product and it drives me freaking batty. So that means this goes in the trash, which now means that I have thrown away not just the dollars that I spent for the part, but the potential. So people will say, well, it's only a couple of cents of, you know, it only costs you a couple of dollars for these parts. It doesn't. Throwing that away cost me a hundred dollars because this is a $99 pickup that now I cannot sell to you and I have to wait for another one. So this kind of inconsistency really, really, really bugs me. So I don't actually use that strap flat work anymore. This is another set of flat work that I get from another company uh, that I really like actually. Here's the problem with this flat work though. If we look at this, this is die cut and on the edge is this little flashing stuff. See that? That you have to cut off of here every time. So I have to go in here with an X-Acto knife every time and cut all these edges off um, every time I make a pickup. It's just not conducive to production. It's not conducive to doing what we want to do on a daily basis. So uh, how do we solve this problem? This is not an easy problem to solve. I mean, you could say, okay, yeah, it, it is. 
an easy problem to solve. All we really have to do is um, shop around to other vendors, find materials that will work for what we're doing, and um, you know, and then get get what we want, and you know, have have the result that we want. That's not as easy as it looks. So what we've done uh, is. <laughs> Uh, this costs so much money and is so expensive and takes so much time. But uh, I think for the purposes of scaling my business, the purposes of always having uh, control over quality, uh, this is what we've done. I bought my own laser. Uh, this is a CO2 CNC laser. Um, it's got a bunch of components to it, but the main one is the laser table and the laser right there. Hmm, smells like barbecue. And then over here, we've got a water chiller and an exhaust situation. And then on the other side, down underneath over there is a little compressor that, uh, that we then can use uh, to, it has air injection. So like a, a welder will inject argon there's a little air injection here that helps with the laser output right there. Uh, and then of course we need a computer to control it. So we have this computer workstation uh, and uh, some software and yeah. So that's the, that's, this is the way we solved it, but there's more to it than just this. So the next question is we need to secure the bulk material. Now these are just samples. Um, I got these from Philadelphia Luthery, but you have to get, to do this properly, you have to get big sheets, okay? So we're gonna spend literally hundreds of dollars um, in material, and we're gonna get it here. Now, the trick about this is, you can't just call up Fender and be like, hey, what do you use so that I can use the same thing? Nobody's gonna tell you. I've even got friends of mine that know uh, people at Fender and nobody will give up this information. The other thing is we've also got to have the files to cut to the correct dimensions and we don't want this kind of inconsistency. We want stuff that we want. We want to be able to establish a design that works every time, that is scalable and that makes sense uh, cost-wise. So it's taken me hours and hours and hours and hours to get to the point where we have strat pickups bobbins that look fantastic work fantastic and are of the perfect measurement uh, i'll show you a little about how we get there so we literally have to sit in front of the computer for hours and we have to draw pictures um, I started literally from a pencil tracing because nobody would give me this information. So I had to start drawing from scratch. I had to draw the stuff. I had to come in here and get each of these circle dimensions exactly right for the uh, um, dimensions of the magnets. I also had to understand the kerfing or the thickness basically of the laser so that we knew what to cut. Um, so even though we have 187 magnets, this is not a 187 hole because of the fitment that I want. Uh, if you'll notice here, this is an older design. So right here we've got, uh, these holes are only 41 thousandths and they're supposed to be 90 thousandths. Oops, uh, this is an earlier design. Um, and then we have to go ahead and uh, cut and cut and cut and cut. Probably it took me, I don't know, a bunch of tries and a bunch of material, wasted material, hours. And of course, you know, I am doing this in the evenings, um, not during work time because I'm making pickups and making videos the whole rest of the time. So this is like an, uh, you know, after hours project to get this done. So then we'll run power tests to make sure that uh, the cutting and the depth of everything is right. Uh, and you see, it does give you that sticky stuff on there. So we're gonna have to wash all of this stuff afterwards. So that's part of the process too. But then we finally, finally get to cutting a bobbin.
this is the final result. The magnets fit perfectly. The dimensions are perfect. The thickness of the material is perfect. We've got two different materials here, 90 thousandths and 62 thousandths. It's actually 93 and 62. Um, now, the trick is, uh, and then we have to press the eyelets in, and we have to actually rinse it so that it's not all sticky. Uh, we do that before we press it together, of course. Um, and we have a product that I am actually happy with, and that the consistency of the product, this stuff was good enough, like I could get by with it. Uh, but you know, we're just, we're not just as good as guys around here. We're, we want the best. I want the best of everything for our customers and our clients, and I want stuff that makes sense and is scalable and it works. And this is it. So we apply this to now. Here's the here's the crazy part. So now we have to do this for strat pickups. We have to do which means two different programs, upper and lower. We have to do this for tele pickups, which is four programs because we have three different. We have two different materials and four different products, you know, end result products, a neck upper and lower, a bridge upper and lower. Uh, those have to be compatible not only with everything that we do, but with the metal base plates that we use on our Telecaster pickups. Um, then we're gonna do precision base stuff. Uh, we have some new products coming that you don't know about yet because now that we have a laser available, we can make stuff that we couldn't make before and that we could not buy. Um, <laughs> Stingray music, man. Um, and some other things. So we're really, really excited about the possibilities now that we have this. Plus, we're gonna do some custom stuff that you can't get anywhere else. We're gonna do things that only you'll be able to get at Dylan Talks Tone exclusive to here. So uh, the possibilities of this are awesome, but the most important thing for me is quality control. Uh, I feel that this will take us to the next level. This is gonna take us, when you open the box and you look at one of our products, when we were using this stuff, it was good. Now that we are doing it ourselves, it's going to be amazing. Uh, the fitment in your guitar, the feel of it, everything. Yes, does it matter about tone? No, but I want you to know that you have confidence in the quality of the stuff that you put in your guitar. I just feel it's important. And I want you to feel the fact that we have put this much work into giving you this. Um, you know, we don't just buy a bunch of, it's, it's like a parts caster versus like an actual bespoke instrument. I feel like this is what we're able to do now. This is a properly bespoke part. Of course, we can't make our own magnets, but nobody can. So uh, other than that though, this is really, really cool stuff. Um, but only automating the areas that uh, give us production and quality, but not um, taking away the personal side of what we do for you every day when we make stuff. I think it's really cool. It's a cool balance. It's a hard balance uh, because as we get busier, we want to do things that um, make it to where we can produce more stuff and make more people happy. But at the same time, I don't want to lose that personal touch of it. You know what I mean? So it's, it's a little bit of a balance. It's something that I've been going through the last couple of years as we grow, but this is just an absolutely massive step. And I am so excited about this. It's absolutely the coolest thing. Um, we will probably post more little videos and stuff as we do things. And as I've got a, um, a particular pickup that I'm gonna develop from scratch that actually nobody makes right now. And I'll try to uh, chronicle that uh, whole process for you, um, the mistakes and the throwaways and the, all that kind of stuff as we do that. Because I think it's important for you to see the amount of work that goes into every product. You know, you open up a white box from us, um, you know, that's been discreetly packaged uh, and you get the end product. But I think sometimes it's, it's important to have the connection of understanding, holy smokes, the hours that went into this. I probably have, well, I know, I'll tell you right now, I have 10,000 bucks in that setup. Um, and I have probably 20 hours in this pickup just to get it to this point, uh, to where we have something scalable and that we really like. So, you know, there's a lot to it. Super fun though. Uh, this takes me back to my, 
uh, dirt biking days when I was prototyping. I was telling Leslie last night, prototyping parts is one of my favorite things. Uh, I used to pretty much live with a set of calipers in my hand, uh, running an end mill and a lathe and making dirt bike parts and prototyping parts and then sending them off to the machine shop to have them mass produced. And so living with a caliper in my hand, there's just something super creative about that. I just, I absolutely love it. So, you know, sitting here and going, okay, how many thousandths of an inch? Oh, no, it's not that much. We need to move this over here and do just so much fun. I just, I absolutely love this aspect of what we do and I've not had this piece of it and it's just giving me all kinds of ideas for creativity. So it's super fun. Anyway, I wanted to share that with you today. I think it's really cool and really important that you see it. If you have any questions about it or you want me to dive in specifically to any aspect of this, please let me know um, because this is, again, a very important and big piece of what we do now and I wanted you to be a part of it. Thanks for hanging out, and I guess we will see you uh, tomorrow night for the live stream.